Hello, Keith Ruck here at VengeMachinery.org. Got a project we're going to start on today, and uh, basically what we're going to be doing, I mentioned this in an earlier Eyes and Ends video, I've got a uh, cross-feed uh, screw and nut that came off of an old antique uh, lathe made by Reed uh, back in the early 1900s. And this is for a viewer out in Texas who asked me if I could give him a hand. Uh, he can't find any replacement parts, obviously, for such an old machine. It is an unusual, these have square threads in them, uh, which, you know, have pretty much been replaced by Acme threads, but back at that time period, they used a lot of square threads. So a square thread form, instead of having an angle, you know, regular uh, thread will be 60 degrees, and Acme threads about 29 and a half degrees. Square threads were literally square, uh, 90 degrees on each side. They're very difficult to machine. Uh, and while they have some advantages in a lead screw situation, uh, it's pretty much been replaced by Acme and uh, some various um, other Acme type forms where you actually have a little bit of an angle in there. So our game plan here is uh, we're gonna actually have to make a new thread, uh, a new screw. We're gonna have to make a new nut. This one is, is broken and stripped out. Um, I'm gonna be using um, it's uh, kind of an, uh, an Acme kick. It's not a true Acme 29 and a half. I'm actually using a, kind of a modified square thread, I think is what they call it. It has a 10 degree angle, 10 degree included angle on it uh, is what I'm gonna end up using. I quite honestly would have rather used Acme on this, uh, but the real reason that I'm doing that is, is I was able to find, this is an unusual thread pitch. It's eight threads per inch. It's basically half inch uh, material, half inch stock, uh, eight threads per inch. Uh, again, an unusual thread, even in Acme, uh, in its left hand. And I got lucky, and just on eBay, I found a half inch, eight left hand tap to do the, the nut with, uh, but it is that modified uh, square threads, which actually will be perfect for this. We're just gonna have to machine uh, the, the new shaft using that thread pitch. Uh, if I could have, well, I couldn't find a, even a half inch Acme left hand, Acme 8. Couldn't even find one. And if I could, it would probably be several hundred dollars to buy that tap. Uh, the one I picked up on eBay, eBay was, it was less than 30 bucks. It was brand new. It's just an oddball size. So anyway, that's what we're going to use. So first step of the day is we're going to actually start on making the nut first. Uh, because we're going to need this to actually check our thread as we're machining the thread later on. So we're going to be doing that. Let me zoom you in here and kind of show you what we're starting with, show you the game plan for going forward. All right, so here's the original uh, nut. And as you can see, uh, it's beyond repair. Uh, the threads were stripped out. The whole outside part of it has been broken off. The original material for this one, uh, it, it looks like it's cast iron. And cast iron was commonly used for making nuts like this, uh, mainly because cast iron on steel is actually a pretty good bearing material. The cast iron and, uh, won't wear the steel very much. Uh, so anyway, that, they made a lot of these out of cast iron. Uh, nuts like this for lead screws were also very often made out of bronze. Uh, again, similar materials. So you want the nut to wear and not the screw. Uh, and if you look on this one, you can actually see down in here, these threads are very worn down close to the end. As you get out down here, you have a much more defined um, pitch to them or, or defined threads, whereas down here they're kind of rounded over and not as big in diameter. Hence another reason why we need to make a new screw. But uh, right now we're making the nut. Uh, to make this out of, I'm actually going to use bronze instead of uh, cast iron. And the reason is, is, let me zoom out where you can see that. And the reason is, is that I happen to have a piece of bronze material that I bought for a project a long time ago. Uh, the width is, you know, this way is, is, you know, pretty much the same. The thickness is pretty much the same. It's a little bit thicker. No big deal. We can shave a little bit of material off and, um, you know, we can cut it to length. So I've already got a blank here that I've cut off of this uh, that basically we will be making this new um, nut out of, as you can see. So anyway, we're going to use bronze. That'll make a good material to make this out of. And uh, we're going to have to 
makes basically make this uh, this form uh, and do some machining. So my idea here is is we're going to start. We're going to put this in the middle machine. Uh, I'm going to actually form the half round on the top first. Then we'll probably take it, put it in the four jaw chuck. We'll turn this uh, stob on the bottom. And then we'll also probably put it in the four jaw chuck again and uh, drill the hole through the part. Uh, that could be done on the middle machine easily as well. The, the one on the bottom we pretty much need to do on the lathe, I think. Uh, that'll be the easiest way to do that. So let's get going. All right, so we got some parallels down the bottom of the vise to hold this. And uh, I'm just gonna come in here we're going to put our part in like such. Now, because this is just a bandsaw cut on the bottom, I have no way of knowing if that bottom is square or not. In fact, it probably isn't. So I'm going to come in here with a uh, just a square, and we're going to actually kind of square it up using the square. And I'm going to just tighten that up in the vise like such. And we should be... That should be square on the sides and we can start machining that top now. So to make the uh, half round top on this, uh, what I've got in here is a round over bit or a radius bit. Um, and this is three quarters of an inch. So this has got a three eighths inch radius in it. And uh, we're just basically gonna go down one side and come back to the other. We'll probably make a couple of passes and get it uh, just right. So let's see here. I'm going to start so let's start right here basically just going to have to raise the table up on it until it gets a full cut on it Taking about a 50 thousandths cut each time. I'm not trying to get in a hurry here, guys. Just taking my time and getting it knocked out. So I'm going to come out here kind of toward the end. I can see when I come up if I hit the top. This is getting real close to being a full pass. I'm going to go ahead and take it. I'm also going to feed in the back just a little bit. I'm going to basically just pull it up until I see that top start cutting across the top there, which will tell me I've pretty much got it all the way down. You can see it coming across the top. I think that's probably it right there. So now, we come to the other side. All right, as long as I'm over here on the mill, I want to go ahead and get this bottom uh, just face off a little bit to get it flat more than anything else. So uh, let me get out here a little bit, bring it up to the dust touches. That's probably going to be more than enough to clean it up. Let me just zip across that. So 
so here's where we're at guys here's uh, kind of what we're making it's a little bit higher than what it needs to be i can always face that off on the bottom but you can see it's starting to take shape we've got the dome across the top and uh, you can see where we're going to turn the stem on the bottom now uh, one thing i want to comment i'm sure people are going to comment about this uh, surface that's on this uh, piece of bronze uh, the that finish that you see on the outside is just a rough finish this is basically an extruded piece of material uh, rather than so to make the bars they basically extrude this and that's where these marks come from they're just on the very surface uh, you can take a just a file or a, put it on the sander and those marks just go right away uh, but you know for right now i'm not worried about that we'll finish all that up toward the end of the project but uh, anyway i know somebody's going to look at that and wonder what's going on with that surface finish what i've done is i went in here measured uh, the width and length on this and then just divided it by two and then I scratched it in using my calipers. And uh, to do this, I kind of went from both sides. Uh, so you've really got two lines in here. So right in the center is where I want to be. And it was pretty darn close to the X marks spot method, uh, but this is going to be getting me a little ac more accurate. So I think what I'm going to do now is uh, see if I can take a little center punch and uh, punch that and give me a little dimple right there in that little spot. Let me find me a punch. I'm gonna come in here now and just find that center. And they make a little optical center punch. And I really wish I had one of those. I just want a little tiny bump right there. And that's right on the center, so that's good. Yeah, I wish I had one of those little optical center punches that you can lay up on here, look down through the optical line up your crosshair, and then put your punch in and punch it. Uh, that would really be more accurate for this, but that's going to get me where I need to be. We've got a uh, dimple right there where I want to be. I've got my block over here in the forge I'll chuck now. We've just kind of got it in here and it's, you know, I'm eyeballing it, kind of getting it somewhere close to the center. This is a difficult piece to get indicated in because it's, it's not a square, it's a rectangle, it's not round. It's not like you can just really easily come in here and put an indicator on here. You could come in here and indicate, but then you have to get your jaw running uh, straight up and down, etc., cetera, uh, to really get a in good indication off of it. And then the measurement's different on these two than these two. So I'm gonna use a little bit different method indicating this in that's gonna make it a little bit easier, I hope. So um, we've got the center identified. We went ahead and did that. I've got a, I just put a little prick mark in there with a the center punch. And um, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna come in here with just a uh, center, a uh, dead center. We got a point on one end, it has a center hole on the other end. And I'm just gonna put that point in here and we're gonna put this between centers on the lathe um, like such. Let me zoom you out a little bit better so you can see this. All right, so what you see here now is we've got this center basically going between the live center that we know is the center uh, on the tailstock. And we've got it in that little uh, center hole that I put in here or, or put in there with a center punch. Now what I'm basically doing is, is I'm transitioning. I, I've got something round that I can indicate off of. So that piece is wobbling around. And now I can come in here with an indicator, uh, put it right here. And as you will see, it's gonna be just like indicating in something round. So uh, that'll give me something to work off of. Let me get my key chuck and we'll start dialing this in on the four jaw. So that looks like it'll be about the farthest one out. And it's about 50 thousandths out that way. So um, need to loosen this one up. And then we'll Come over here to this one, and I want to go about half of that distance on the indicator. So, yeah, roughly 25. About right there. Now, when I go back to the other side, it should be, okay, it's close. So now, let's see which way we need to go. See what run that is in this direction. So we got about a hundred thousandths. 
need to come this way. Loosen up. Come on around here and crank it in again about half that distance. That wasn't near enough. Re zero that. Well, pretty darn close right here. Let's see if I can bump that one in just a little bit. We're within a thousandth. I'm probably just going to go with it. All right. We're going to call that good enough. It's only out about a thousandth or so, right? Not even a thousandth, probably half a thousandth. So uh, that's good enough. One thing I want to do here is I just want to make sure this part is in here square and it's, it, I'm going to take that center out. So I'm just going to come in here and just verify uh, with this being a square part, you know, that thing could, be flipping around a little bit. It looks really nice though. So that should be on center. So we're going to get a tool cut up in here now. Uh, basically, I've got a mark, a line scribed on here. This is how deep it needs to go. This needs to be turned down to, uh, I think it's five eighths diameter. I'll have to measure that again, but we're going to turn that down and then we got to drill and tap a hole in the end. All right, I think we're ready to start turning this. Um, we're just going to come in here and start taking some light passes on this. Come here and touch off. Target on this is 630 thousandths, which is what the other one measures. It's a little over uh, five eighths. We're at about five, uh, 775, so uh, still got a little ways to go.
only about a thousandths over. So I'm just going to barely fuzz just a little bit more. And we should be right on the money. Yeah, we're going to be just fine there. All right, I'm going to come in here now and face this bottom off and just get that square. Last thing we're going to do here is come and face this off to length and uh, it's uh, about 25 thousandths longer than what it needs to be right now. So we'll just whittle this away. Come in here and just uh, I'm just using this tool here. I just want to put a little bit of a chamfer on it. That should be fine right there. All right. So next step is we got a, a drilling tap, a three eight sixteen hole in the bottom of this uh, little piece. So I'm gonna. Start with a center drill, and we'll come in here and get us a center established, just a little dipple to start our drill with. That should be plenty. All right, coming here, we got a 5 16 drill bit, and uh, I need to mark on there how deep I want to go. Hang on a second. I only want the depth to be about a half inch. I'm just going to put me a mark on my drill bit right there. That's not a critical, but I just don't want to get up into the part above it. All right, that's deep enough. All right, we're ready to tap this thing. I've got a tap in here. This is a 3 8 uh, 16 tap. And we've got a tap follower back here in a, in a wrench. Uh, I've just got a, a regular starting tap in here right now. We'll uh, get this going and then probably chase back through there with the bottom and tap. So this uh, little tap follower, if you haven't ever seen them, it's just a little uh, center. It goes on the end down here and it just keeps everything in line. Uh, while you're tapping. This is real handy on a lathe or a miller machine, either one. When you drill a hole, you can turn around and uh, tap down that same uh, line and keep everything in nice in alignment. So let's go to depth here. All right, it's as deep as we can go. So I'm going to bring it out. So again, this is the bottoming tap here. It's got threads all the way down to the bottom. Uh, you never want to start with this tap uh, because it, it needs to have the threads to kind of get started in. But once you got a hole started, this will get your threads all the way down to the bottom of that hole. So we'll just run this back down through here. And it really doesn't start cutting until you get down. I can feel it starting now. It's getting down where that taper was at. And 
and that feels like the bottom. So we'll go ahead and come on out with it. So we got all our machining done on the bottom. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pull this thing out and uh, take a look at what we got. And here we go. So I've got my original um, nut here as well as what we're working on and uh, the size and proportions look like they're coming out about right. The next thing we need to do is um, get a hole drilled and tapped uh, through here. And first thing I need to do is locate the center of that hole. We're gonna set this thing up in the four jaw just like we did the bottom hole where we'll locate it, uh, you know, put a punch in there and then use the indicator trick like we did before to get it centered up in the chuck. But first thing I need to do is lay out the center. So, you know, first thing is let's look at where this center of the hole is here. This is the most critical measurement is how high off the bottom. This is my reference because this nut's going to go down in there. The screw is a certain height above that. So this thing really needs to be at the right height. And, uh, you know, I can't get it precisely, I guess, but we're just eyeballing this on center. And I've kind of already come in here and, you know, kind of looking at where my, my, my calipers are going up and down through here you know that that's about the bottom of the hole about right there at 520 thousandths so um, i'm just going to come in here and we'll scribe a line across there and that's going to be the center of the hole in that direction now the other hole you know the original nut looks like it was off center one way on this side, but on the other side, I think it was in center. I think the hole just wasn't quite straight through the piece um, and it rotates. So that's probably wasn't that critical, uh, but we're gonna try to get it on the center. So again, I'm just coming here. We'll measure this, get that measurement. That's 842 thousandths and we'll half that. Half of that is 421 thousandths. So we'll come in here and scratch it that way. I like to scratch it on both sides so that if your calipers are off just a little bit, you can, uh, you'll can you have really two lines there and that we're right on the money. So I got that. We'll go ahead and put a center punch in there and go set this back up on the four jaw. All right, let's see what we got. So yeah, I'm probably just a shy under a thousandth out, good enough for what we're doing. So uh, let's get ready to drill this out. Before we drill uh, the part over there, I want to talk a little bit about the thread we're going to use for this. Uh, the original screw is down here, and the original screw that was in here was half inch, eight left-handed and they were square threads. So that's uh, eight threads per inch, left-handed, uh, half inch outside diameter, and again, uh, it was a square thread. And now this is a picture of a square thread in the machinery's handbook. You can see the shoulders of the threads are 90 degrees. This thread form was used a lot on lead screws and things on lathes and, and machines back in the early days of manufacturing uh, because it was very efficient. There was very little backlash that, could, that it, this, would, this system would uh, produce, but it was soon um, disbanded. They quit using it, not because it wasn't a good thread form, uh, but because it's extremely difficult to machine uh, true square threads. Uh, it can be done, but it's very labor intensive. It's time consuming. For mass producing machines, it's just not cost effective. Uh, and really the standard that they kind of went to was the Acme thread. Now the Acme thread is a 29 degree pitch. So you got some angle on here. Regular thread, uh, at least here in America, is 60 degrees. So it's roughly half of that. In fact, um, well, this is a stub acne here, but you still you kind of see the the 60 or the what did I say? 14 and a half degree, uh, not 60 degree, 14 and a half degree uh, shoulders on it. Um, you know, ideally, I would have just I'm going to have to make a new thread uh, anyway. I would have ideally just made this acne. The problem was was that cutting the internal threads um, half inch eight left-handed 
Acme threads. I would have to single point it uh, because I couldn't find a tap uh, that was in that thread configuration. An eight thread per inch on a half inch diameter is not a standard Acme size and you know the the taps just were not readily available. You know, okay, I could have gone in there and cut it internal threads on the lathe, but getting an internal threading tool in that small of a diameter, issue, issue, issue. I just uh, was looking for the easy way out. And again, if I could have found a left hand eight Acme tap, half inch, that's probably the direction I would have gone. Uh, but what I ended up with was I found this, and believe it or not, I found this tap here on eBay. And uh, it's, it's what's called a 10 degree modified square thread. This is a non-standard thread. It is defined in the machinery's handbook, uh, but this is considered a non-standard thread. Um, and basically what it has is it has a 10 degree included angle on here. So to be in 90 degrees, it's five degrees on each side. This is a, a picture of it. Uh, and it's kind of a compromise between square threads and putting a little bit of pitch on there, but not a whole lot. Um, and again, this is not a really a standard thread per se, but it is defined in the machinery's handbook. And uh, for whatever reason, I was able to find a half inch eight left hand uh, 10 degree modified square thread tap on eBay for about 30 bucks and a brand spanking new one, never been used. And uh, I said, you know what? <laughs> We're trying to save money here. This is the direction we're going. I can make these threads whatever I need to. That's not a problem. We can machine it on the, on the lathe. So anyway, that's a little bit about the thread form we're using and um, while we're going with this particular thread form. Again, I would prefer to just go Acme, but without spending a pile of money on a tap or going to a whole heck of a lot of headache to try to single point internal thread something that small diameter, uh, this was just a good compromise. Now the, the, the big challenge that I have is, is I have the tap, but I don't have anything that tells me what size hole I need to drill for this tap. So I've done a little bit of mathematics. Uh, because this is a three point tap, you really can't measure across uh, to get a, a root diameter in there. Uh, but using some math and some calculations, I basically determined that I need to drill this with a letter Y tap, or, or excuse me, drill, a letter Y drill, uh, which is 0 0.404 uh, in diameter. So that's what we're going to use, uh, and we're going to go over here on the lathe now, drill the hole, and then hopefully not have too much trouble uh, using this tap. And we got our letter Y drill in here. Let's see if we can punch a hole through here. So I got my tap set up in here and we're gonna give this a try. Now, I'm gonna tell you up front, I'm a little bit concerned. Uh, we're gonna lube this thing up pretty well. Um, my concern is, is I know like with Acme threads, very often you actually will have um, multiple threads in a tap. So you tap it first, you know, it, it takes part of it out, then the, the second tap comes through, lines up on the first one, it cuts another pass. So you kind of take it in, in usually three steps, and we got all three steps on one tap here. Uh, that concerns me. I don't know how this is gonna work. Uh, so we're just gonna have to get in here and give it a try. Now again, these are left-hand threads, so you know, normally, you know, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, well, we're going backwards, so. Um, we got to start this thing out. Well, it's starting good. Let's keep that tight behind it. So far, so good. Getting kind of tight now. Uh, 
All right, so I've actually, the tap is coming out in the bottom, so we're well into this thing. Uh, but I'm taking a lot of cut and I'm just taking a good bit of force. My biggest fear is we break the tap. That would not be good at this point. tap probably isn't made to tap something this deep. There's a lot of friction in there. Let's keep going and see if we can make it. It's pulling the chips out nice. I'm probably getting close to a half inch sticking out on the inside. Taking a lot more force than I like. I think we're pretty well through it. It's still real tight though. I'm wondering if my inside diameter wasn't quite enough because I've cut all my threads and it's still just dragging pretty heavily. I may have needed to go to the next size up drill bit. it out now. It's pretty well all the way through. I'll tell you, yeah. And it's loosened up a lot now. All right, so the new nut is complete. You know, it's funny because this one here is completely near about completely stripped out. So the all the wall thickness in this one is is all gone whereas and it's probably had wear in it on top of that, which was part of the reason why this hole looks a lot bigger than this one. Um, but it's the same size. This, this, this nut is just completely wore out uh, in more ways than one. So, but anyway, we have the new nut made. And next step will be to make a new screw here for it. And uh, that's going to be another video. Well, there you go. One new lathe nut <laughs> made from scratch. And uh, we're halfway through with this project. Uh, maybe not quite halfway in time-wise, but halfway in components. Uh, next set, we'll come in here. We're going to have to make um, a new, whole new screw. Uh, part of that, I'm going to have to make a custom threading tool to do this. And for that, I'm going to need to use my surface grinder, which I've still got to do a little bit of work to, to get it up and going. So before I can make the screw, uh, we'll probably have a video on the surface grinder getting it fixed up and then uh, we may even have a video on creating that custom threading tool uh, with all the right geometry and then we'll get in here and make this uh, thread. So it's coming along. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll be back with more on this project uh, soon. Thanks for watching.